Hello everyone, Lawrence here with the Trek Powerfly LT9 Plus because it comes with massive tires. Uh, not everyone lives very close or near a bike park with a shuttle service or an uplift. Uh, for me personally, it's a two and a half hour drive to get to the closest bike park with a shuttle service. And so I really like e-bikes because it's like having a mountain bike with a built-in shuttle service. Plus, going back up the hill is a lot more fun than just sitting on a bus or on a little ski lift. The Trek Powerfly LT then is a long travel version of Trek's full suspension e-mountain bike. Up front we get 160 millimeters of travel and in the rear 150. Whether or not you want to call that long travel is up to you, but for the riding I usually do that is plenty. Now it also comes with the Bosch Performance CX motor. This is Bosch top of the line motor. 250 watt as all the other stuff 25 km an hour top speed as you know EU regulations would have you limit your bike to but it's a really powerful one I'll get into detail on that quite shortly but first let's go over the build on this bike now the first thing I personally noticed were the Shimano XT four pod brakes I think this is a really high-end brake that a lot of people get as an upgrade and so to see it on the aluminium top of the line model is actually really nice to me because it's just really good brakes, very consistent, predictable, and just everything you kind of want from a brake. Next up is the SRAM drivetrain. So it's almost complete GX, except the chain that is NX. It comes with a one downshift at a time shifter. Personally, it's a mixed bag to me. I mean, it's awesome to not snap chains, but it's not so awesome to go really fast into a turn and then have to shift multiple times and have that delay to get back into an easier gear. So it's a mixed bag and personally I would probably switch that shifter as the first thing I do. The next thing I would switch out on this bike is the stem. I mean the cockpit is very nice but it's a 35 millimeter aluminium bar. It's pretty harsh. I personally prefer thinner carbon bars because they're just they cancel out vibrations a bit. This is really stiff which some people might really like. Personally, not a fan. And also the stem is a little bit too long. I would prefer a 35 mil stem on the here just because it's, again, easier and I don't get that bus driver feel, uh, especially because this is the XL frame. And so the reach is already pretty long. Having an extra 60 mil with the stem, tiny bit too much for me personally. Next up in the cockpit is the dropper post. It's a Bontrager 150 mil travel cable actuated dropper post. It works fine, easy to, Maintain easy to you know take out because it's cable actuated thumbs up from me there the lever is also pretty ergonomic So that's all I kind of want the grips however are a bit too thin for my hands And I feel like maybe on XL frames the grip should be thicker as well because it's usually bigger people riding them with bigger hands So maybe that's something bike manufacturers should look into and then the final thing on the bars is the Bosch Purion controller it's big, it's bulky, it looks a bit outdated. The reason Trek calls this the plus is because of the tires. So it's a 2.8 inch wide Bontrager XR4. Very nice, grippy, soft, supple tire. I really like it. It's quite round at the top, but then the side knobs are quite aggressive. They bite in very nicely. Same tire front and rear, so that also helps with balance on this bike. And I think 2.8 is the perfect width for e-bikes. Maybe a three inch would be slightly better, but then you get a lot more flexing. Um, they're mounted on 40 millimeter wide Bontrager rims. They're very low profile for how wide they are. So they're very, very nice and compliant. Although they lack a little bit of lateral stiffness when you kind of land sideways, you really feel that. Now I asked you guys on the internet what you would like to know about this bike. And the main thing was battery life and how I get on with this motor. Now let's get into battery life first because it's the most complex thing to talk about. If we just look at it mathematically, it's a 500 watt hour battery. We have a 250 watt nominal power output motor. So if you do the maths, that's two hours of battery life. However, if you're just gonna climb almost up a vertical slope, it's not really gonna last you more than an hour because that top power output is well over 500 watts. And if you go with like flat terrain, like where I'm here, just random fields, you're gonna get about three hours, which is what I get on my local trails. Now, how I get on with the Bosch motor is a different story. Now, I personally only really use it in turbo mode because that's what I'm kind of used to. Although the EMTB mode is a lot more forgiving and easier to live with. Um, but what I feel like the Bosch motors do is they kick in really harshly. They don't transition into power assist as well as a Shimano motor does, for example. It's quite aggressive there. You just pedal and boom, that motor shoots you up a hill which is great when you really need to get up somewhere, but it can feel a bit unnatural and more of like, I'm riding a motorcycle than I'm riding a bicycle. Now, again, it is powerful. 
I can live with it, but because it's quite aggressive, it's hard to modulate wheel spin. And uh, on some hills, you can't really get up just because there's just too much power coming all at once. Now, while the feel of the motor is not really a problem to me necessarily, what is, is the sheer size of it. Because this CX motor is so massive, Trek really had to make a lot of concessions in their frame design. For example, you can notice this massive kink in the C-tube. Now the C-tube is already not very slack. It's 71 degrees, so 73.5 effectively, but that depend again depends on just how high up you have your saddle. I have my saddle all the way forwards to kind of get around that slack seat angle. But again, it's not really perfect when you're doing really steep climbs. Another side effect of the size of the motor is the linkage design. So you end up with a pretty long chain stay, but the pivot point is quite far backwards. And as a result, you actually get a very short linkage. What that means is as the wheel moves up, it also moves forward quite a bit. This makes the bike incredibly poppy on smooth terrain and you can basically just boost every single free ride or flow trail on your local bike park. It's really nice for that and you can easily pump stuff and it's very playful because of it. But at the same time, it also means that on really rough terrain, the bike gets a little bit unstable because it gets so much shorter. Now the suspension in the back is very supple at first, but again, because of the linkage, it ramps up really quickly and you kind of also go through that really quickly. So the first couple of centimeters, you're through that immediately, giving you great small bump sensitivity, decent mid-stroke support, but I feel like in the mid-stroke, you're already near the end of the stroke. However, having that massive ramp up towards the end also means that the bottom out transition is quite seamless. So you don't really notice it bottoming out all that much. And I feel that really fits in with the fork as well. So the Fox 36 float with the grip damper on there. It's just a really good fork. It's the e-bike specific model. So it's nice and stiff with a full crown instead of a hollow crown. I kind of like the fork. It's not as adjustable as other forks, but it's just stiff enough, very supple, very easy to live with as well. So from a suspension standpoint, all I can really say is if you look for a bike to go hit really rough downhill trails with, don't get this one. But if you want something nice and playful, then it's probably pretty damn good. Now, one key number that I haven't really talked to you guys about is that head angle. So this is 65 and a half degrees in the low setting because Trek has implemented the MIMO link, which gives you a high and a low setting in the linkage. I haven't even tried it in the high setting yet because I just like slack bikes. That's kind of it. And so before rounding up this video, there are a few more tiny little annoyances that I wanted to talk about. Let's start with the knock block up front. This is great for not smashing your controls into your top tube. However, with this bike in this size, the handlebar can't possibly reach the top tube and the little rubber stoppers on the frame aren't near where the fork would go if it were to bash into the down tube. Second item, there is a lovely bash plate near the motor. And combined with the tiny little Bosch gear, that means you can really just use it as a skid plate to get over stuff. However, mud can get in there quite easily and it's really difficult to get it out again. Um, so maybe it should come with like some sort of quick release to get that plate out. Again, you know, small annoyance, but I think it's worth mentioning. Next up is the battery. It's lovely how integrated it is and you can use the same charger when it's both in the bike and out of the bike. Lovely, it comes with a handy handle. However, you need the key to put it in as well, which I forgot the first time I rode it. And then lastly, there is a chainstay protector, but it doesn't have a protection on the bottom side. And so the paint is completely gone there. So if you buy this bike, put an extra little bit of protection on the underneath of your chainstay. And so to conclude this video, I personally really like it, especially for more flowier terrain and also for not having to drive two and a half hours to get an uplift service. I think. Having an e-bike just makes going up the hill that little bit more fun. And it also means you get a lot more downhills in. So you can jump this thing around as much as you really want to. Anyway, guys, hit that like button if you like the video and do the whole usual YouTube subscribe and bell icon, all that sort of stuff. If you have any questions about it, let me know in the comment area. I read all of them, try to comment and reply on as many of them as I possibly can. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I'm gonna get back home before it gets way too hot in here.